changing you know in oncology now we are moving from maximum tolerable treatment to minimum effective treatment uh, not compromising the oncological outcome and principles of uh, oncology yet giving a quality of life and cosmesis uh, multidisciplinary organ preservation protocol in line with there is a huge paradigm shift that is happening in gyne onco at one place in ovarian cancer while we are moving to maximum dis uh, dis surgery like crs hypex in cervical cancer and in endometrial cancer more and more minimal invasive uh, sentinel lymph node has come so th today uh, the three topics which are going to be presented by dr aniket shinde uh, exam going dnb surgical onco student are all in line with each other so today he will present all the three to discuss these two great experts whom i really admire uh, for having achieved excellently in our surgical onco field great teachers great clinician more than that humble person and great human beings uh, whom i always fall for help two great people heading two large cancer center dr ganesh who is the head of vaidehi cancer center extremely senior surgical oncologist who had a very robust teaching program in mcs surgical onco great teacher examiner and uh, uh, dr harit bhai you know you know he heads one of the very large conglomerate of uh, cancer center max cancer center extremely senior a uh, great passion for teaching uh, very good in knowledge always up to date and uh, this particular topic is also their area of interest so in their very busy schedule they have made time for all of you please utilize this opportunity uh, i thank and welcome dr harit chaturvedi sir and uh, ganesh for having accepted and uh, over to you uh, aniket please take care please type your questions in chat box and it will be answered in the last 15 minutes thank you very much thanks sir so much. good morning everyone my name is dr anikit shinde uh, today i'm going to discuss the recent land landmark trials in the central lymph node biopsy of the endometrial cancers so today's session we are going to divide in the four parts the first is the introduction second one will be discuss discussing the central trial second third one will be the fias trial the fourth is the shrek trial the endometrial carcinoma is one of the leading gynecological cancer the incidence has been rising with the with aging and the increase obesity of the population that is in 78% of the patients with a tumor confined to the uterus and without metastasis the first approach is surgery in such cases approximately 10 to 15% of the of these patients have metastatic nodal disease which is why guidelines have been always emphasized the importance of lymphadenectomy to stratify the risk and tailor the adjunct treatment However, the comprehensive lymphadenectomy is related to significant morbidity and seems not to improve either the progression-free or the overall survival in these patients. The sentinel lymphoid biopsy has therefore been proposed as a less invasive strategy for the nodal assessment. The lymphatic mapping with sentinel lymphoid biopsy has emerged as an alternative and optimal compromise instead of the systemic uh, instead of the systematic lymphadenectomy. Theoretically, sentinel lymphoid biopsy should be should reflect the status of the entire nodal basin and provide the pathologic information required to guide decision on the adjunct therapy, while avoiding the heightened risk of the intraoperative injury and the chronic lymphedema and other complications associated with the complete lymphadenectomy. The sentinel lymphoid concept in the endometrial cancer was first introduced in 1996. A consensus among international endometrial cancer experts recently defined the sentinel lymph node as the most proximal node. irrespective of the nodal station in which the node is found the sentinel lymph node algorithm uh, in the ca endometrium was uh, described by the ms cases group a specific algorithm that includes uh, the first part as the peritoneal and the sero serosal evaluation and the washings second part is the retroperitoneal evaluation including the removal of all sentinel lymph nodes and any suspicious node regardless of mapping the third part is the site specific pelvic lymphatomy if there is no mapping on a hemi pelvis the fourth part is a parotid lymphatomy is left to the attending uh, attending surgeon the ms case is central lymph node algorithm should be followed in every case to avoid the false negative cases the nccn describe the adherence to this algorithm as the key point for a successful central lymph node mapping this is the diagram depicting the ms case is algorithm for the central lymph node biopsy in a C endometrium case, which includes the peritoneal line serosal evaluation, followed by the retroperitoneal evaluation. If there is complete mapping of the both hemi pelvis, then the algorithm is completed. If there is monolateral 
monolateral pelvic lymphectomy on the other side of the non map pelvis performed if there is only one side of the uh, hemipelvis is showing the central lymph node and the parotid lymphectomy by the surgeon uh, discretion next we are going to say discuss the center trial center trial is the assessment of central lymph node biopsy versus lymphectomy for intermediate and the high grade endometrial cancer staging the objective the objective of the uh, of the study was to di uh, to examine the diagnostic accuracy performance characteristic and the morbidity associated with the central lymph node biopsy using indocyanin green patient with the intermediate and high grade endometrial cancer the authors conducted a, conducted the same central lymph node biopsy versus a lymphectomy for intermediate and high grade endometrial cancer the, it is a prospective multi center cohort study at three designated centers in toronto ontario and canada the recruitment began in july 2015 and was stopped early according to the pre specified accuracy criteria on the june 2019 the operation were completed by 14 fellowship trained gynecologic gynae oncologist the inclusion criteria for this study includes uh, age 18 or more than 18 the clinical stage 1 grade 2 endometrial carcinoma high grade endometrial carcinoma which includes the grade 3 endometrial serous carcinosarcoma clear cell clear cell carcinoma undifferentiated and the d differentiated and the mixed high grade carcinomas plus the patient with which are scheduled for the laparoscopic or robotic primary histomy with an intent to complete the full staging the exclusion criteria includes the grade 1 endometrial uh, carcinoma which is a low risk uh, uh, endometrial cancer the recurrent the suspected advanced endometrial cancer uh, prior history of any retrocortical surgery or the abdominal pelvic radiotherapy need for the new urgent care therapy because of the advanced uh, disease status the plan to omit the lymphectomy based on the surgical and the anesthetic risk pregnancy and iodine allergy because of the low nodal event rates in patient with grade 2 endometrial endometrial carcinoma which was included in the inclusion criteria the protocols were amended in december 2017 to continue enrollment of patients with high grade cancer only the first part is icg administration during surgery uh, during induction of induction of anesthesia endocyanin green for endocyanin green of uh, concentration 2.5 mg per ml uh, was given uh, to the spinal needle the cervix was injected at 3 and 9 o'clock position with 0.5 ml of icg superficially uh, around 1 to 2 mm depth and 0.5 ml of icg deep around 1 cm deep in the depth of the cervix ecto cervix for a total dose of 2 ml of endocyanin green after that laparoscopy was subsequently initiated with an abdominal survey to confirm the feasibility of the lymphectomy patient then underwent a standard algorithm for central lymph node biopsy in the first step each hemipelvis was assessed for successful mapping of a central lymph node all green nodes uh, with the icg uh, using the infrared camera were, and the non green nodes with a green uh, afferent lymphatic channel lymphatic channels were deemed central lymph nodes the site after that the site specific lymphectomy was performed on non map hemipelvis which include the pelvic lymph node alone for patient with grade 2 endometrial endometrial carcinoma or pelvic lymph node and the parotid node for the patient with the high grade cancers patient then underwent the reference standard of lymphectomy which is bilateral pelvic lymph node dissection for the grade 2 endometrial carcinoma bilateral pelvic lymph node plus parotid for the high grade endometrial carcinoma patient with the high patient with the grade 2 endometrial endometrial carcinoma underwent parotid lymph node dissection only when a central lymph node map to the parotid region or the surgeon deem it necessary depending on the risk factor associated with the high risk factor associated with the endometrial cancer after the central lymph node algorithm was complete patient underwent total hysterectomy bilateral salping ophorectomy and dermal biopsy central lymph nodes were handled using a standardized ultra staging protocol at all centers The primary endpoint of the surgery was to assess the sensitivity of the central lymph node biopsy algorithm in detecting the metastatic disease. The secondary endpoints were to measure the diagnostic accuracy for the central lymph node specimen by sensitivity, false negative rate, negative predictive value. Also, it also includes the patient specific detection rates of the central lymph nodes, site specific detection of the lymph nodes, and the bilateral detection rate of the central lymph nodes. This is the flow diagram uh, depicting the uh, study. the uh, out of the uh, 341 patient which are initially evaluated 158 patient were eligible and enrolled for the surgical intervention uh, 
two of the uh, one of the patient was had cervical cancer on pathology report so he was excluded and other person had ovarian cancer on finally pathology report so it was excluded so total uh, 156 of patient were included in this study all enrolled patients were included in the analysis for diagnostic accuracy of the sentinel inferno biopsy algorithm and the detection rates hemiplegia with at least one map sentinel node and a corresponding lymphatomy were included in the analysis for diagnostic accuracy of the sentinel lymph node cyst pen sentinel lymph node pathology was compared with non sentinel load pathology within the same patient or hemiplegia depending on the pain point assuming an estimated 20% node positive rate authors required 46 patient with node positive disease for an estimated 230 patients recorded in two studies to test this hypothesis the result of the study out of the 156 patient the median age was 65.5 years the median body mass index was 27.5 the total patients with high grade endometrial cancer were 126 all patients underwent the sentinel lymph node biopsy and the pelvic lymph node dissection out of out of which 80% of patients underwent the parotid lymph node dissection who, who had the high grade endometrial cancer. The sentinel lymph node detection rate was 97.4% per patient. The 87.5% uh, for the hemipelvis and the 77.6% uh, bilaterally mapping of the sentinel lymph nodes. Of the 27 patients with nodal metastasis, 26 patients were correctly identified by the sentinel lymph node algorithm, yielding a sensitivity of 96 percent a false negative rate of 4 percent and a negative predictive value of 99 percent only one patient was misclassified by the sentinel virus algorithm two patient with a node positive disease had a single metastatic single uh, sentinel lymph node mapped outside the traditional pelvic lymph node uh, uh, dissection boundaries one was in parametrium the second one was in uh, common iliac five patient with node positive disease required immunohistochemistry chemistry for diagnosis with node positive disease. The center study was powered to prospectively evaluate the diagnostic accuracy of the sentinel lymph node biopsy using the ICG, patient, ICG in patients with intermediate and the higher endometrial cancer. More than 96% of the patients with node positive disease were correctly identified by the sentinel lymph node biopsy algorithm and 99% 90, 90, of the patient with negative sentinel lymph node had a node negative disease. These measures are comparable to those observed for the breast cancer and melanoma for which sentinel lymph node biopsy has become the standard of care. It suggests that endometrial sentinel lymph node biopsy has the performance characteristics required to be trialed as a replacement for the lymphadenectomy. The center study adds to previous work uh, by being applicable to patients with high grade endometrial cancer. More than 80% of the total cohort. 89% uh, of all patients with node positive disease and 24% of the minimum required 25 patients with node positive disease had a high grade endometrial cancer. Previous studies by the Rossi et al. Uh, found similar sensitivity of 96% 98% and negative predictive value of 19% were, were focused. Uh, but these studies were focused on patients who had the grade 1 and grade 2 endometrial uh, endo carcinoma who had heterogen mix of the high risk features or who had uh, received blue dye or technetium. Uh, uh, for the tracer. The authors found that sentinel lymph node biopsy had acceptable diagnostic accuracy with a more contemporary tracer in a cohort large composed of patients with a high grade disease. The center study also suggests that sentinel lymph node biopsy may improve the detection of the nodal metastasis as 14 patients with node positive disease, that is 52% of the patient, had a metastatic disease in sentinel lymph node, in sentinel lymph node only and seven cases that 26% of patients were found outside lymphadenectomy boundaries of the standard uh, pelvic and the parotid lymph node dissection uh, uh, or required the immunohistochemistry for the diagnosis. These patients would not have been identified by the pelvic lymph node dissection or the parotid lymph node dissection. Studies in breast and gynecology cancer suggest that sentinel lymph node biopsy increases the detection of micrometastasis and uh, isolated tumor cells by 4 to 25%. Although such, so, although such small volume metastasis may have little pronostic significance regard, uh, regardless of the adjunct therapy in the patient with low-grade endometrial cancer, their association with oncologic outcomes in patients with high-grade endometrial cancer remains unclear. The randomized trial of radiation therapy with, with, uh, with or without chemotherapy for endometrial cancer, that is 43 trial, further demonstrate that patients with high-grade endometrial cancer and lymph node metastasis 
driver survive benefit from that adjoint chemotherapy as a as a result it is crucial that we continue to identify the patient with high grade endometrial cancer with small volume metastasis and this appears to be achieved most effectively by the sentinel lymphoid biopsy using the ultra staging for the uh, uh, on the sentinel lymphoids on the basis of this data existing literature on the sentinel lymphoid biopsy could potentially replace lymphoidectomy for the surgical staging of both low and high uh, high grade endometrial cancer the strength of this study the center study is an important addition to the literature because of its rigorous perspective design use of both pelvic lymph node and the para parotid lymph node dissection as the reference standard and the statistical power to assess the diagnostic accuracy of central lymph node biopsy specifically in patients with intermediate and high grade endometrial cancer the limitation of the study are uh, uh, estimates of the diagnostic accuracy may not be generalizable to a uh, less experienced surgeons and the centers to central lymph node biopsy with different types of tra tracers to patients who would not typically participate in surgical trials or the patient in whom pelvic lymph node dissection or the parotid lymph node dissection may not be feasible there is unclear information on survival recurrence and the morbidity associated with the central lymph node biopsy alone conclusion of this center trial in this study central lymph node biopsy had acceptable diagnostic accuracy compared with the lymphadenectomy for the detection of the nodal metastatic disease in high grade endometrial cancer on the basis of this study and the existing literature central lymph node biopsy appears to be a viable option for the surgical staging of both low and high grade endometrial cancer these are the baseline characteristics of the characteristics of the enrolled patients 90% of the patients are the post menopausal a mean age was 60.5 bmi was 27.5 simple hysterectomy was performed in 99% of the patients and 83% of the patients were performed uh, uh, operated by laparoscopic surgeries the post operative characteristics of the enrolled enrol patients are the central lymph node detection rate was uh, 97%. Uh, the bilateral mapping was 77%. The pelvic lymphadenectomy was performed in 100 patients. Parotid lymphadenectomy was performed in 80.2% of the patient. Mean uh, central lymph nodes removed are 3. Pelvic lymph nodes uh, are 16 and the parotid nodes are 5. The primary and secondary outcome the central lymph node biopsy was positive uh, the central lymph node biopsy was negative in 1% uh, uh, of the one one patient but uh, on the uh, uh, on on the completion uh, lymphadenectomy was positive so the false positive uh, case was seen in one one case one patient This is the anatomical location of the central lymph nodes. Uh, there are two parts, the upper uh, paracycle, paracycle pathway and the lower paracycle pathways. Most of the central lymph nodes that were uh, detected were along the upper paracycle pathway, which was along the external iliac artery, uh, uh, the obturator nodes. Here, the right external iliac includes the 29%, the left external iliac includes the 45%. The obturator nodes include 30% and the right obturator node also includes 35%. Uh, should I start the second one, sir? Second trial, sir. Yes, uh, Dr. Shetty, just a suggestion. Yes, sir. You present the trial findings, okay? Yes, and, sir. And uh, don't read through the whole uh, trial. Present the trial findings and then we'll have a discussion in the end, okay? Okay, okay sir. It's the important aspect of all the things. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. The second trial uh, that we are going to discuss is the FIRES trial. It is a comparison of central lymph node biopsy to lymphadenectomy for endometrial cancer staging. This trial was uh, this article was published in Lancet Journal of Oncology in 2017, and the study was conducted between the August 2012 to October 2015. Aim of the study was to measure the sensitivity and the negative predictive value of the central lymph node biopsy, uh, central lymph node mapping, compared with the gold standard of complete lymphadenectomy in patient in detecting the metastatic disease for the endometrial cancer. The primary objective was to uh, estimate the sensitivity and the negative predictive value of the central lymphadenectomy mapping 
using the robotic assisted fluorescence imaging of the tracer ICG in detecting the lymphatic metastasis in patients with endometrial cancer. The inclusion criteria for the fire study are uh, uh, the documented endometrial cancer of any histology if uh, uh, clinically determined stage 1 disease. Uh, no age limit, there are no age limit for the eligibility. Patients were included in the study if they made the performance status and the life expectancy to tolerate a surgical staging procedure. The exclusion criteria were the pregnant patients, uh, patient with the extra uterine disease, patient with the previous histotomy or the treatment for the endometrial cancer, previous retrocutal surgery or the lymphadenectomy. The contraindication indication also include the also include the hepatic impairment or the iodine allergy. Patient who had mapping of at least one sentinel lymph node were included in the primary analysis. All patients who received the study intervention, that is injection of the ICG dye, regardless of mapping result, were included as part of the assessment of mapping and in the safety analysis in, in an intention to treat manner. The ICG dye which was given in the cervix was, uh, was uh, uh, the dose was 0.5 mg per ml. The spinal needle was used to inject the uh, ICG. Uh, one ml of uh, one ml of ICG was solution was in, injected into the uterine service at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock position in the F2 service with one uh, in the depth of 1 centimeter, achieving a total dose of 1 mg. The Darwin C SI and XI surgical robots were using used in all patients. 18 surgeons from 10 centers in the USA participated in this trial. After obtaining, after obtaining a peritoneal entry, fluorescent imaging was used to visualize the ICG tracer in the lymphatics. A successful mapping was defined by observing a channel leading from the cervix directly to at least one candidate of lymph node in at least one hemipelvis. Identified sentinel lymph nodes were then retrieved and labeled for location. Completion bilateral lymphadenectomy was then done on all patients. Pelvic lymphadenectomy was required in all patients, but the surgeon were permitted to omit paraotic lymphadenectomy if it was not if it was technically unfeasible or clinically irrelevant because of the low risk factor for the paraotic nodal involvement. Surgeons also provided graphical data on sentinel lymph node location and whether the sentinel node was located outside the standard basins of the lymphadenectomy. The, the order in which they were located on the lymphatic channel and whether the node occurred on the same or on a different channel on each individual side. The sentinel node specimens were handled by pathologists according to the standardized ultra staging protocol. Uh, results of this study uh, between 2012 and 2015, 385 patients were enrolled. Sentinel lymph node mapping with complete pelvic lymphatomy was done in 340 patients and paraotic lymphatomy was done in 50% of these patients. 86% of uh, patients had successful mapping of at least one sentinel lymph node. 12% of patients had positive nodes, 36 of whom had at least one map sentinel lymph node. The nodal metastases were identified in the sentinel lymph node of 35 uh, of these 36 patients, yielding a sensitivity to detect the node positive disease of 97.2% and a negative priority value of 19.6%. 60% of the patients with positive sentinel lymph nodes had a disease limited to the sentinel lymph nodes only. And 14 of the 35 patients, that 40% 40, 40 of patients had additional positive nodes in their non sentinel lymph node specimens. The sentinel lymph nodes represent the largest volume of the tumor metastasis that in 83% of the patients with node positive disease. 54% of the patients with positive sentinel nodes and uh, had low volume disease identified only with ultra staging. This is the trial profile out of the 385 patients which are enrolled earlier. 293 patients, uh, 340 patients had an infant tummy. Uh, 257 had a node negative disease, 36 were node positive, uh, 35 had at least one positive sentinel node and the one had negative sentinel node. Uh, the 82, uh, almost 82 percent of the patient belong to the endometrial uh, endometrial type of uh, endometrial carcinoma. Serous carcinoma was in 12 percent and the carcinoma sarcoma is 4 percent. The post-operative stage, most of the patient belong to the uh, uh, 80 percent of the patient belong to the uh, stage one and uh, stage two patients were.
full mapping of the central lymph node, lymph node was seen in 86 percent of the patient bilateral mapping was in 52 percent of the patient paraortic central lymph node were detected in 23 percent of the patient and the isolated paraortic uh, central lymph nodes were detected in less than one percent of the patients median median number of central nodes removed were two and the median number of total nodes removed were 19. The most common grade theory for adverse event or serious adverse events were post-operative neurological disorders and post-operative respiratory distress of failure. Those are seen for four patients. 22 patients had serious adverse events with one related to the study intervention, uh, which is a ureteric injury uh, incurred during the central lymph node dissection. Should I continue, sir? Maybe, please. Yes, sir. Uh, conclusion of the study. Yes, sir. Uh, the central lymph nodes identified with endocyanin green have a high degree of diagnostic accuracy in detecting the endometrial cancer metastasis and can safely replace lymphadenectomy in the staging of the endometrial cancer. The central lymph node biopsy will not identify metastasis in 33% of the patient with node positive disease, but has the potential to expose fewer patients to the morbidity of a complete lymphadenectomy. The critics of the FIRE trial, uh, it demonstrated a high sensitivity for the detecting metastasis, the low bilateral detection rate, and the need for the inclusion of the paraortic central lymph nodes in the algorithm. It led to the exposure of a non no, it led to exposure of the significant number of patients to the morbidity of at least unilateral pelvic lymphatomy and or paraortic dissection, thereby deviating from the ideal central lymph node concept, concept. Even though the inclusion of a surgeons new to the technique in the FIRE study, led to the generalizability of the result, the, the true potential of a sentinel node concept was not demonstrated in this study. 28% uh, of the five study population had high grade histologies, which are the highest risk for the metastasis and isolated parotid metastasis. The role of sentinel node biopsy in these highest risk patients is not definitely addressed in this study population. Uh, should I continue, sir? The third, the third one, third trial, sir. Yeah, continue. Yes. Uh, the third trial that we are going to discuss is the Shrek trial, which is a pelvic central lymph node detection in high uh, in high grade endometrial cancer. Uh, this article was published in the European Journal of Cancer in June 2019. Shrek study was conducted at two Swedish tertiary reference centers, the Skin University Hospital and the Karolinska University Hospital, between 2014 and 2018. Uh, the aim of the study was to evaluate the diagnostic accuracy of a surgically and anatomically defined sentinel lymph node ICG algorithm and the overall sentinel lymph node algorithm for the detection of pelvic lymph node metastasis in women with high risk endometrial cancer when performed by select high volume robotic surgeons. Second aim of the study was to evaluate the unilateral and bilateral mapping rates and the morbidity of the procedure. Shrek study is a prospective non randomized trial. The, uh, the consecutive women with the presumed FIGO. Uh, stage 1 and 2 high risk endometrial cancer underwent robotic surgery at two academic centers by five accredited surgeons. An anatomically based algorithm was adhered to following a cervical injection of ICG with the re injection of tracer in case of non display of predefined lymphatic pathways. After removal of central lymph nodes, a pelvic and infrarenal paraortic lymphatomy was performed. The, all enrolled women were, uh, were scheduled for the robot histomy, bilateral sulfing ophorotomy, pelvic central lymph node biopsy, pelvic uh, lymph node dissection, and the infrarenal parotid lymph node dissection. The latter uh, infrarenal parotid lymph node dissection uh, omitted in minority of women due to relative comorbidity. Uh, if applicable, an infracolic omitotomy was also performed. The surgeries were uh, done by uh, the OVIN, say, SI or XI uh, surgical systems were used. All patients underwent preoperative computer tomography scan of the thorax and abdomen. Preoperative histological diagnosis and grade were decided on specimen obtained from the endometrial biopsy and the hysteroscopy or curettage. The inclusion criteria for this SHREC trial includes age 18 or uh, more than that, a pathologically proven endometrial carcinoma of any histological subtype, clinically stage 1 or 2, and plan for the primary surgery. At least one of the following preoperative high risk criteria should be there uh, to, for the inclusion which was endometrial, endometrial cancer of figure uh, grade 3, a non-endometrial histology, more than 50% or 50 by, uh, equal to 50% of myometric invasion, cervical stromal invasion, or until uh, February 14, 2017, a non-deployed cytometry, the ability to understand and sign informed consent, 
the exclusion criteria includes the non consenting patient pregnant patients uh, uh, who performance status of 3 or uh, or uh, or more excluding the bmi of more than 40 age more than 85 years with who performance status of 2 or more surgical contraindication for laparoscopic approach or the lymphectomy uh, anesthesiology contraindication for the laparoscopic approach pre existing lower limb lymphedema grade 2 or more locally advanced disease or intra abdominal distant metastasis at the pre operative ct mri allergy to iodine a known liver disease a bleeding disorder or a mandatory anti thrombotic uh, treatments the central lymph node uh, procedure uh, the central lymph node procedure was performed according to the defined anatomically based surgical algorithm a 2.5 mg per ml concentration of icg was taken uh, uh, 23 gauge needle was uh, used uh, for the injection of the icg in the uh, ecto cervix 0.25 ml of uh, icg was injected at 2 4 8 and 10 o'clock position uh, respectively half of the volume among the uh, 0.25 ml of uh, icg was injected uh, some mucosally and half of it was uh, injected 3 cm deep into the cervical stroma the firefly mode was uh, utilized for the identification of the upper paracycle pa paracycle pathway and the lower paracycle pathways in case of non display in any pathway after 10 minutes and if lateral reinjection at 3 or 9 o'clock position was uh, or the ecto cervix was given with 0.25 ml of ic solution the primary endpoint was sensitivity of the central lymph node icg algorithm the secondary endpoints were sensitivity of the overall central lymph node uh, biopsy algorithm including the macroscopically suspected nodes as central lymph node central lymph node mapping rates and the morbidity of the central lymph node procedure uh, results of shrek trial includes the out of the 257 uh, women were analyzed 54 had the lymph node metastasis 52 of these were correctly identified by the central lymph node icg algorithm except in two women one with the false negative icg central lymph node and one non map woman the pelvic lymph node metastasis were identified by the overall central lymph node algorithm the central lymph node icg algorithm had a sensitivity of 98% and a negative predictive value of 99.5% the sensitivity of the overall central lymph node algorithm was 100% and the negative predictive value of, was of 100%. The bilateral mapping in the Shrek trial was seen in 95% of the hemipelvises. The two women uh, had isolated paraortic metastasis. No adverse events were occurred during the central lymph node procedure as per. 32% uh, of the women had post-operative complication within 30 days of surgery and 3% experienced serious adverse event during surgery and uh, after surgery. The conclusion of the Shrek trial, with a complete sensitivity to detect the pelvic lymph node metastasis, the described pelvic central lymph node algorithm uh, in the hands of an experienced surgeon exclude overall nodal involvement in 19% and thereby safely replace the full lymphadenectomy in higher risk endometrial cancers. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Well, Dr. Hari, you would start. Dr. Ganesh, yeah, you have some comments, yeah, so that we can set the conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I will just start. Uh, Shinde, first question is, yes, sir. why have we ventured into analyzing uh, lymph nodes through SLNB? In an obviously N0 status, what is the need? Uh, so in the uh, like figure stage one and two uh, 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 endometrial cancer, sir. Out, around 15 to 80 percent of the patient had the uh, lymph node metastasis, which was not, uh, which was seen uh, only after the comprehensive lymphadenectomy. So, uh, uh, 15 to 18 percent of the patients, sir. Okay. Hmm. Uh, uh, so for uh, uh, and the comprehensive lymphadenectomy was associated with the uh, many comorbidities and the neurological and the uh, lymphedema lymphosis formation. So. Uh, what happens if we pick up the nodes? What is the implication on treatment if you are detecting positive nodes? Either through lymphadenectomy or SLNB, how does it change our management? Uh, so the lymph node uh, positive uh, uh, is a... Uh, so lymph node positive patients had, uh, has a, 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 a more chance of recurrence, so and the patient can benefit from adding chemotherapy. What happens to the stage? Uh, so uh, uh, the stage progress is like uh, with the node positivity, sir. Uh, so uh, 
So for yeah. for that purpose, sir, we'll need to uh, pick up those nodes which are positive, sir. So which stage they go into? What would be the stage upgrading? Uh, uh, stage three, sir. Okay. Okay. So they are going up on the stage, and mm -hmm. are the treatments going to be added because they are positive? Uh, yes, sir. Like if the nodes are po positive, sir, we can uh, the patient can benefit from the chemotherapy, sir. Adding the chemotherapy. Plus the uh, yes. yes, sir. So we would add additional treatments, isn't it, to improve yes, outcomes? Yes, sir. So we need to know the lymph node status then, isn't it? Yes, sir. So lymphadenectomy versus SLNB. That is the main aim of these three studies. Yes, sir. Should you routinely do lymphadenectomies or uh, resort to a less invasive sentinel no, lymph node? Isn't it? That are the aims of the three studies. Yes, sir. Sir, Harit, sir, you were. Yeah, so I think. Uh... Lymph node dissection is a, a sampling or having known the, uh, knowing the status of lymph nodes is very important for treatment of uh, endometrial cancer, and therefore we must have representative nodes sampled. Now, what these three trials are suggesting that sentinel lymph node is a good option, good viable option. We can avoid the morbidity, and at the same time, make sure it would don't lose out on the proper staging, upgradation, upstaging, or adjuvant treatment so that your survival does not get compromised. So the key to every intervention is that we should not uh, any as Swam Shekhar was saying in the beginning that it is how minimal we can do and still get the best results. That is the whole philosophy of current cancer treatment. So I would strongly say that this has become a gold standard today because we are all practicing this. And one of our students had a thesis in 2015, which we uh, did our own study. And ever since we are doing that, the only caveat is that three things I would say everybody should follow. One is that it requires proper pre-surgical evaluation or staging. That means at least MRI has to be done for the pelvis for all these patients, at least. Because it is important that if you have got already disease nodes there, the false negative rate is likely to go up. Okay, and a good clinical evaluation and MRI pelvis is critical. You should have CT chest abdomen if required, but MRI pelvis is basic and important. Second caveat is that when you start on this journey, then don't start with disease, uh, high grade disease or extra uterine disease and all that. You should always start with low risk disease so that the risk of losing out is less. Third important point is that always make sure that once you have taken sentinel nodes, you also do the lymphidectomy, do your own study, make sure that you do not have fall, high false negative rate. Because while it will look very simple, that the path is uh, visible and everything is there, but actually it needs training and dissection of the area to make sure that you pick up the nodes. And, and one interesting thing is that even if you do a regular lymphadenectomy, full lymphadenectomy, please try to do sent incorporate sentinel in your practice because you have some extra locations you'll pick up these nodes. So these are anyway missed out on routine surgeries. So <clears throat> if we incorporate all these ideas, probably we'll provide better treatment to our patients and make sure that the morbidity is also less. So I think these three studies reflect the time frame in which these uh, treat, uh, uh, studies were done. For example, in the first study, which was done between period of 2015 to 17, there they have talked about low grade tumors. In the second study, they've incorporated the high grade tumors also. This is a typical learning pattern, which all of us incorporate when we take new ideas on the table and take it forward. So that is uh, my comment on this. And Regarding a uh, couple of questions there, this is these are important questions. So what we, when we started, what we were doing, we we're doing injections at two locations, that the cervix and also at the fundus. When you put in the laparoscope, you inject at the fundus also. And we initially did uh, <clears throat> um, this blue, isosol blue injection and also methylene blue also was used at times and technetium also was used. But now ICG is far superior and makes it all very simple because I, uh, <clears throat> isosulfan blue used to actually cause a lot of soiling in the soft tissues and became at times difficult. The moment you start the section, it becomes more difficult and muddy and difficult to pick up. But ICG and especially with robotic fire firefly technique, all this is highlights up very well and it shows the nodes which are green. And all those channels which reach up to a node, that those nodes should also be sampled. Yes. And as is mentioned in both the studies, all three studies, that any significant node, whether it is not lighting up, should also be included in central node. So how do you pick up these nodes, which are otherwise significant? This is picked up 
when you do a pre-operative imaging and you actually spend some time on the images, not read the report and reflect. Spend some time on the images. The surgeon must look at the images, make sure that all the areas have been carefully evaluated. And then those nodes specially should be targeted and uh, looked out for the surgeons. Yeah, Ganesh. Uh, yeah. So do you notice any difference in these three studies, uh, Dr. Nikke? Oh, yes, sir. So the bilateral. Is there something different in any one of these studies than the others? Yes, sir. The bilateral uh, mapping rate uh, are different with the three studies, sir. In the fire Which study, was the best? Uh, so the uh, Sherik trials are with uh, for the high uh, high risk endometrial cancer uh, with, using the ICG has the maximum uh, bilateral mapping, sir. It was around uh, 98 percent, sir. 95 percent, sir. With the fire study, it was least. It was around 54 uh, percent, sir. And with the uh, with the central trial, it was around 74 percent, sir. Would you have any explanation for that, whether it is right or wrong? From these three papers, would you find something which the uh, Shrek trial has done differently, yes, which sir. could have improved the uh, detection rates? Yes, sir. So in the Shrek trial, sir, uh, at four position they had given the uh, ICG, sir, like two o'clock, four o'clock, uh, eight o'clock, and ten o'clock. Uh, instead of the classic two. Uh, yes, instead of the classic two, uh, two three, and nine o'clock, sir. Plus, okay. uh, after waiting for ten minutes, they saw if there is any fluorescence inside the uh, along the lymphatic channels. If the fluorescence was not there, lymphatic channels were not visible. They are going to inject 0.25 ml of the ICG at uh, 3 or 9 o'clock position, sir. Plus, the depth of uh, uh, insertion of yes. the needle was 3 centimeter with the Shrek trial, sir, while with the others, it was a 1 centimeter only, sir. So, so deep so, down into the stroma in the Shrek yeah, trial. Yes, yeah, so because the, and way, the classic, yeah, whatever, 1 up to yes, sir, 1 centimeter. One centimeter. Isn't it? There is that's a difference. How much it is significant only further studies will tell. Yes, but among these three papers, that is a difference you find, isn't it? Yes, sir. So what is the most important part of these uh, three trials as far as uh, what do you mean by sensitivity and false negativity in this? Why uh, false sir. negativity is important for this study? All three papers. Yes, sir. Uh, so on uh, central lymphoid biopsy, sir. Uh, uh, will not get, uh, uh, on on the hemipelvis. No node will be uh, 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 no node will be visible, sir. So we'll consider it as a uh, the central lymph node uh, will not be picked up, sir. So and uh, uh, so, so the uh, central node that will send for the uh, uh, histopathological evaluation, sir, it will be uh, uh, false negative, sir. It will it will be uh, positive, sir, on the uh, on the comprehensive lymphoid tomography. If we do the node will be positive, but on the uh, central lymph node uh, using the flu uh, fluorescence camera, sir, the, it will not be visible. So uh, we, in that way, we can use the node which was positive, but we, was not picked up on the uh, uh, ICG camera, sir. You know, is there a difference between detection rates and false negativity or uh, sensitivity? Are they different? Uh, yes, sir. These two terms are different in a trial like uh, this? Yes, sir. Yeah. So is there a difference between detection rates and false negativity? Uh, yes, sir. D yes. Detection rate uh, uh, defines the sensitivity of the uh, studies and the false negative rates are like nodes which are... Uh... No, 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 no. Detection rates is how many are picking up on the study. Yes, sir. How many actually the study is able to determine the nodes, determine. isn't it? Yes, Pick sir. up on the uh, while operating. Yes, sir. And false negativity means what? So false negative is the uh, node uh, which are not uh, uh, picked up on the uh, sentinel lymph nodes, sir. Uh, on the with the no, 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 no. What is false negative? Uh, so Dr. The... Harit wants to add a comment. Yeah, no, no. I just want don't want to. I just want to make it simple that for uh, so detection is when you do hundred cases, in how many the nodes were picked up. Yes, sir. So there yes. was some 10 percent, 15 percent. It was not picked up. The, the, for example, bilateral was not picked up, or unilateral only was picked up, or at least one node was picked up, or in all three areas it was picked up. Yes, so sir. how many cases it was picked up? That is the yes, detection sir. rate. Yes, sir. Visit it all. Yeah. Yeah, Ganesh. Yeah, yeah. Please go on. I'm and just false up. negative is when you have uh, done the total lymphadenectomy. In yes. that, you have got the node positive, while it was okay. not so in the sentinel node. Yes, sir. 
Okay. It means actually they are positive, but your test report or it has negative. That's falsely negative. Yes, sir. Right? So that rate yes, should not be very high for the test to be effective. Yes, sir. Isn't it? Yes, Otherwise, you will miss out on positive notes, isn't yes, it? Yes, sir. So uniform so 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 difference, I think students should know. Or melanoma, other areas also, there has been a small false negative rate, which is going down as people globally are learning and evolving. And so I always believe that this evolution, so in breast, for example, when this was accepted in initial studies, or 10-11% was the false negative rate. Now it is not acceptable to have more than 2 to 3% false negative rate. And the reason lies is a good evaluation of the ultrasound pre-surgery before the patient comes on the table. A good evaluation is very important. That includes today ultrasound FNSE for a few centers and uh, looking at the imaging and all those things. So, why have one small question, Anike? That uh, I don't want to put in a question format, but I want to comment that. See, the BMI is one thing which has been discussed here. Yes, sir. Why you think it has been discussed, and uh, why? While I know high BMI is obviously one of the uh, high risk factors for endometrial cancer, yes, sir. but why it is important in sentinel node study? Yes, one, one probable reason there is that uh, in as the BMI will go up, your detection rate is likely to become more and more difficult. Yes, sir. Because, so that is, uh, that is what when I was going through it, I was wondering that this is probably because yes, when we also started, we were restricting ourselves to more leaner patients and uh, the low BMI and all. But uh, so the important thing is that whatever we have to keep evolving and adapting to new things as we go through literature or our ideas and uh, whatever you are doing as evolving, it is important that we go through all that. At the uh, same time, we should not risk our new patients who are getting recruited. So all evolution of trials has to be in a manner that you are first doing the standard thing and checking out what is the new idea coming up on the table. There's a question on the. What are the reasons for not getting heart nodes or blue nodes in sentinel node mapping in practice? I'm not seeing this question. This is a question answer uh, this thing. Uh, what is the question? So it means if you have done the sentinel node mapping, what are the reasons why you may not be seeing the nodes? Means you are not able to detect. Why you have a false negative? I think that is no, a question. No, no, no. I think why you are not able to detect. Huh, that is uh, not able to pick up. So various not things. Able to pick up. Yeah, yeah. So various things are possible. One is that there can be technical failure also. As Aniket pointed out that in the two injection technique versus four injection technique, the pickup rate was different. So one is just uh, technical failure the the flow is not there and things like but like not been able to the timing may be inappropriate you de delay too much and there's a lot of lighting up or things like that second is that even in breast cancer for example there is about four five percent uh, not able to detect even after having all the injections so and everything on time that is uh, second third is if there's already a node and the channel is clogged then the flow of the dye will not happen. So if that is clogged by malignant cells or even clogged by some lymphatic reaction to something which has happened earlier, that will not happen. So it will. Uh, these are few obvious things which happen in a false negative when you don't pick up the sentinel node. Detection is. And sometimes the location may be far away and you are not able to visualize that area. For example, as you have seen that six, seven locations, presacral, pararectal, all the, unless you see the lymphatic channel, you can go along that. But if you don't see a lymphatic channel, then you may not be looking out for that area and you may miss out completely. That is possible. Anything else, Ganesh, you think which is? So the, uh, the location which you have mentioned is an indicator. I mean, you are likely to look there. So you are likely to follow the channels and then see the uh, green channels and then trace the node. As Dr. Harit told, you pick up all those areas where it terminates into a node. If at all, you have to look at some point as per you where it was. What was the most commonest site, Dr. Upper, Nikhil? Upper parasacral, uh, parasacral pathway, sir, which is along the obturator node. Which is a node, which is a sentinel node, node, which is a yes. more most frequent location. Yes, you sir. put the slide. Yes, obturator is the right external iliac no, node, sir. Not obturator. You tell the correct. Which was the most common site? Uh, external iliac, sir. External iliac, isn't it? Sir. External yes. iliac, just uh, medial to the external iliac artery. This is the commonest yes, point. 
Yes, sir. Isn't it? There is a nice description about the lymphatic pathways, how they go to each nodal station, yes, which is described, which is beyond the scope of present uh, this thing, but it's described what are the possible nodes there. And as Dr. Hari told, sometimes you, the advantage of SLNB is you are picking up nodes beyond the routine, uh, I mean, areas, isn't it? Yes, sir. It could be outside the defined stations. Yes, sir. That is the advantage why it is known to be more effective than conventional lymphadenectomy, which you don't address those areas, isn't it? Yes, that is the advantage of SLNB. There's one more question there. What is the cutoff false negative rate percentage to continue center at a center? I think you should have a less than 10% at least to start with. However, you should gradually come to 5-6%, not more than that. So, Om Shekhar, your, your comments? Uh, yes, sir. No, very, very well covered by both of you. Uh, I think uh, what you approached is absolutely right. Two ways of approaching sentinel in endometrium or breast. Uh, one issue is the minimal access component, uh, reducing the morbidity, time, lymphedema, uh, complications, hematoma, lymphocele. That's one part. That part is definitely all the trials have showed. The other part is, uh, as uh, Ganesh very well actually, you know, uh, elicited out from Aniket, uh, if you do a systematic pelvic lymphadenectomy, don't do paraiotic. 4% paraiotic isolated node power. Positive, pelvic node is positive, 61% of the time paraiotic positive. So we would miss it. The problem in endometrial CA is we over treat low risk by unnecessarily doing systematic pelvic node. Unnecessary sometimes adding radiation. That is the over treatment of low risk. On the contrary, we under treat the high risk. Like for example, there is a FIGO grade uh, 1B. We have done a type 1 extrafacial hysterectomy and systematic pelvic and you're not touched paraiotic and you think, oh, no, no, node is negative. Stage 1 patient doesn't need anything or probably they need vault brachy. That is a high risk case we under treated because we didn't do a node uh, adequate uh, staging. So sentinel node adds to that. If you do sentinel node, then you don't have to worry paraiotic to be done, pelvic only, where to stop because sentinel node would show that would be a better indicator of true N0, N+. plus. Number one, if that node is positive, it becomes stage 3C. Suddenly, prognosis drops down less than 75%. That patient would need chemotherapy and adjuvant EBRT, not just brachy. Also, if paraiotic sentinel node is negative, you can avoid an extended uh, field RT, which is more morbid because the kidney, jejunum, all get irradiated. On the contrary, if you pick up a node in the paraiotic, then you know you should tailor make treat. So, there is an impact on the survival outcome by proper staging. So, truly low risk, you don't over treat. Truly high risk, you don't under treat. Uh, as uh, was enumerated, the trial from Mayo Clinic and MSKCC showed that uh, if you have one group of patients where systematic pelvic and paraiotic lymphadenectomy done, truly N0, you have done sentinel node and N0. At the five year, the sentinel node N0 had a better overall survival, proving that they are true N stage one. If you do systematic pelvic lymphadenectomy, you give 50 nodes to pathologists, they just cut into one and they say it is negative. But if you give sentinel node three or four, they do ultra staging, true node pickup. So, benefit of minimal access able to do early, less bleeding, no lymphocele, no complication, no injury to NIK, iota, vessels, no transmitted current to obturator, no quality of life is one issue. Staging the true N0, so no adjuvant required. Identifying true N plus where chemo RT can be given to have better survival. Both issues sentinel node comes up. And as per the CAP guidelines, so the College of American College of Pathologists, uh, an institution should do a validation trial of 30 before they offer it to the patient and the false negative rate should be less than 3.5 percent after having passed the learning curve is the current status and the microtome of the pathology should be fixed at 2 micron and the cut should be at 2 micron because anything less than 2 micron is a micrometastasis doesn't have a significant survival benefit as of today so these are some of the points uh, which are there, sir. But uh, otherwise, I think very well covered by both of you on both ends. Thanks. Any more questions? Or, uh, I think ultra staging is a very important point highlighted by yes. Somshekar. I missed out on that. That is yes, very yes. important because uh, right, right. everybody, all surgeons should work with their pathologist <coughs> and make sure that we are getting ultra staging done. It should not be routine pathology. Just, just, just to sort of a final this thing, what are the high risk uh, features for an endometrial cancer, Dr. Aniket? 
are you trying to find cancer what constitutes high risk as you told myometal invasion pathology high grade uh, different types of tumors what else you, could you say, say something else anything to do with estrogen progesterone receptors positivity or negativity p53 on conventional ihc and then molecular studies just to know that's all just to close it maybe i'm related to paper but what would we think as high risk so that we are at more our antenna is more sort of worried that we may be dealing a patient with higher chance of node metastasis that is all the worries isn't it higher the risk or risk stratification early stage itself the metastasis chance are higher isn't it there is a clear definition isn't it there are four types molecular types of endometrial cancer which i think you should read okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, that is a basis for uh, doing things in early stage, isn't it? Otherwise, we could have leave, uh, left it. If you look at a Shrek tile, they have taken stage two also. Yes, sir. Yeah. Isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. So, and they include that also and then still end up with a good amount of results. So, it is not just grass staging, but you look at much more than uh, physical staging of disease, isn't it? So, these are my closing comments. Thank you. I think uh, we are done. Anything, think, yes. Any question from any student will be happy to take. We will close the session. Yeah. I think uh, most of the questions are answered both in Q&A and chat box. Uh, so how do you manage isolated tumor cell micrometastasis is, uh, is written, sir. Isolated tumor cells are staged as uh, N0 only for all practical purposes. It doesn't upstage the disease. Uh, so uh, here also we have found on reporting isolated tumor cells. We had discussion on a couple of patients. We we don't over treat them, uh, but sometimes I think the radiation oncologists or medical oncologists are more inclined to be a little bit more uh, sort of uh, think of adjuvant treatments. But as of you now, because the stage doesn't upgrade, I think I would say the treatment remains as per the stage. Yes. <clears throat> there is one more question. Uh, hysteroscopic injection is better or cervical because hysteroscopic injection is known to uh, pick up more parabiotic nodes. So today it is cervical injection, which is the gold standard. And uh, as I mentioned that one of our thesis was done initially. So at that time we were doing injection uh, at the fundus directly on putting in the laparoscope at, in the beginning through the same. But I think uh, as far as the practice is concerned, it is the cervical in injection which we are doing. Yeah, I, I think I would also extrapolate the same in, except it's like in so breast, the injection should be same. Uh, 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 absolutely. There is a uh, randomized trial from China which looked at uh, hysteroscopic injection versus cervical injection versus 
uh, sub zero cell injection into four quadrant in the uterus outside. Uh, and the trial actually showed the rate of identification of sentinel node, false negative rate, sensitivity specificity was all same in all the three groups. So once it was proved that it is same, if you see the breast evolution, intradermal, intratumoral, peritumoral, retroeral, sappy, now meta-analysis uh, from NIH, uh, UK shows all are same. So once we know all the three are same, when there is a randomized control trial from China, the easiest one is picked up now. So yes. nobody want to go hysteroscopy and violate there and do it. That's a cost, complication, depth of injection cannot be controlled. Everybody may not have that access. And sub cell, you don't know if it is a more than 50% muscle invasion needle may go into the tumor. So cervical is very easy. So that's how now all the three randomized trials are picking up cervical. But it is a known fact, hysteroscopic injection picks up parietic little high. But, uh, you know, I'm sure Harit, everybody knows that, you know, now we, all of us are using ICG based uh, robotic. We do pick up uh, robo, you know, 20% nodes SLNB are parietic. So uh, there's no problem as long as the. Application rate should not change, which is same. So that's why the answer is uh, all three are same convenience, variant cervix injection better. Well said, well said. Thank you. So, you know, Aniket, you did well, but uh, what he could have done as an exam going student is uh, given only the salient uh, future, the technique of doing was same in all the three trial. Last, you should have put a tabular column. All the three trial, how they differed, you know, that would have been very easy. So many hundreds and hundreds of logged in. You could have put Sentina trial, you know, you could have put Centaur trial, all the three trial fires and say site of injection, technique, same, same, same. Commonest site of lymph node, external iliac in this, internal iliac or obturator in this. False negative rate in was how much in each and what was the lymphedema. So if you had given an overview of uh, differences of all three in one, it would have been very good. You know, nowadays, uh, if you see how we read a paper, a good abstract summary is equivalent to reading a full paper. That is what you lacked actually. You know, we didn't call you to just read the papers. You should have given a tabulation of compare and contrast of all the tree trial. Watch what similarity, what were different. We could have taken home a message. Nevertheless, you did well, but this is how you should have approached that. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I thank Ganesh and I, you know, I know how busy you are and took a spare time for the benefit of student wholeheartedly on behalf of uh, NBE, DNB board and on behalf of all the students. Uh, personally, you know, my heartfelt thanks to all of you. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank, there you lot, much so. Thank you. There are a lot of questions coming, but you know, as I always say, we are not spoon feeding. We There's should. one question about how do you manage periodic no, uh, nodes uh, if you don't have facility for sentinel load. So if you don't have facility, do it. Sentinel load is just to fine tune. If you are not practicing, please do the standard uh, lymph node dissection. My answer is not going i don't know why I'm just okay yeah yeah absolutely i think we can hear you sir so that's absolutely right so you do a risk stratification surgery uh, high risk do systematic pelvic parietic don't stop at pelvic then you will miss don't the yeah thank you very much so over to navneet singh ji uh, thank you very much thank you sir. thank you very much dr aniket chande for the presentation and thank you very much dr ms ganesh Dr. Harit Chaturvedi and Professor Dr. Somashekar for joining us. And thank you to Anis for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks.